Unknown facts about gladiators. Gladiators didn't just fight to the death. In ancient Rome, gladiators were like famous athletes. They didn't always fight to the death because their managers wanted to keep them alive for more battles. But even with these rules, gladiators didn't have long lives. Most only made it to their mid-twenties, and they fought in about ten matches before they passed away. They were organized into different classes and types. When the Colosseum opened in 80 AD, gladiator games were like organized fights. Gladiators had their own groups and weapons. Some used swords and shields, while others had nets and tridents, like the Retirius, who tried to trap their opponents before attacking. Gladiators had an oath. Gladiators had a special promise to keep. They had to say they were ready to endure torture and even death in the arena when they started. Some gladiators could leave if they paid their boss, but the fear of dying sometimes made them want to end their own lives. To stop this, guards were hired to watch over them. Fighting against animals was rare. Romans loved rare and pretty animals, so they set up special fights with them in the arena. The fights were expensive and owned by the emperor, and expert gladiators called bestiarii fought the animals. Sometimes they used these animals to harm Christians, and rich Romans could watch and even join in the hunts. Not all gladiators were slaves. In the past, gladiators were often slaves or people from lands that were conquered. They were chosen because they were strong and then trained to become fighters. But as the gladiator games became more popular, some free men from the working class chose to become gladiators. They were attracted by the fame, the big crowds, and the chance to win prizes and money. Some even went to special schools to learn how to be gladiators. There were female gladiators. Female gladiators existed, but they were almost all slaves. A prominent fixture on the gladiator scene, Female gladiators were pitted against one another as well as male gladiators and even against dwarfs. There were different types of gladiators. Gladiators had different skills and ways of fighting. They were put into groups based on how good they were, what they knew, and what weapons they used. The Three Cs and Mermelones were very famous for using a sword and shield. Some gladiators fought on horseback with a sword, and they were called Aquites. Then there were the Demarcheris, who fought with two swords at the same time. Roman emperors fought. Some Roman emperors, like Caligula and Titus, actually joined the gladiators in the arena. However, historians believe that these fights were probably not fair. The other gladiators likely let the emperor win without hurting him. There was even an emperor named Commodus who shot down dangerous animals from a safe place and made regular people fight him, which was very dangerous for them. They were the celebs of the day. Gladiators were major celebrities of the day. Triumphant gladiators would appear on paintings, walls and sculptures. Women were particular fans, and saw them as sex symbols. Gladiator blood was believed to have magical powers and some women dipped it into their hairpins. Gladiator sweat was even mixed into perfume, believed to be an aphrodisiac. Spectators never used the thumbs up sign. In the gladiator games, the thumbs up or thumbs down gestures weren't used by the crowd to decide a gladiator's fate. The highest authority at the event, often consulting with the emperor and the audience, made the final decision. They would then show a thumbs up or thumbs down to determine whether the gladiator should live or die. Like and subscribe for more.